That invasion is here, Rhodey. And we can't even tell who the invaders are. Fury, why haven't you called any of your special friends? This war is one I have to fight. Living on the edge to the end of our lives. Roofing the sheepskin telling me lies. Alone. This world is burning, and it was you who lit the match. Tick tock, Nick. This is personal. You're the most wanted man on the planet. Well, Mama always said I was special. Marvel Studios Secret Invasion, only on Disney Plus. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Marvel just dropped a brand new Secret Invasion trailer. There's a bunch of Avengers references, so we'll break it all down. And I'll explain what's happening with the Avengers right now, because some of them are still alive, and we'll get the new Avengers by Captain America 4. Like, the whole idea is that during Captain America 4, they're going to preview what that new Avengers team is going to look like by the time we get to Avengers 5 Kang Dynasty, but they'll be adding members by the time they get to Kang Dynasty. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. Of course, I'll do episode videos when it starts in the next month. They start the new footage with Nick Fury, the real Nick Fury, coming to talk to Rhodey to reveal that there is a secret invasion happening. There's a group of scrolls impersonating world leaders. They need to stop them. And the interesting thing here is that it doesn't seem like Rhodey wants to believe him immediately. Part of that might just be his skepticism, like, we haven't seen you in a while, Nick Fury. Like, he knows the whole thing about the Talos version of Nick Fury standing in for him. Well, he was on his Spear space station, so he thinks that Nick Fury has turned into a Howard Hughes sort of hermit type of person. Like, oh, are you just being crazy? Are you being paranoid about this? Is it really happening? And if it wasn't clear, by the events of Secret Invasion, Rhodey has basically taken Thunderbolt Ross's former job and become the Secretary of State. He's meant to be like the right-hand man to the current U.S. president. We know that Thunderbolt Ross is supposed to be the U.S. president by Captain America 4, but I believe by the events of Secret Invasion, he hasn't yet become the president, and it has something to do with the events of Secret Invasion. Like, once everybody finds out what the scrolls are really doing, they destabilize things so much that Thunderbolt Ross takes advantage of that chaos and rides that wave of popularity that he gets in trying to get rid of the scrolls into office. But there is a rumor that Rhodey will wind up being a scroll in this, or a version of Rhodey. Now, a lot of you would ask, what happened to Rhodey after Avengers Endgame? What about all that character development we saw him during Falcon and Winter Soldier? So there was a real version of Rhodey at some point, but I think they're going to explain what happened to Rhodey when we get to the Armor Wars series. Like, the whole idea of the Iron Man Armor Wars series is that it'll spin out of Secret Invasion, and the whole idea that people have gotten a hold of Iron Man's technology, and part of the reason for that will be how things get destabilized because of what the scrolls are doing, infiltrating all these different world governments. Some of the footage is from previous trailers, but one of the interesting pieces of new footage is Amelia Clark's character telling Nick Fury that it was his fault that Secret Invasion is happening, like it's your fault that all these scrolls are trying to take over. And what she's actually talking about is that back in the 90s, when they had the original scroll event with Captain Marvel and the Kree, he agreed to find them a new place to live, like this group of scrolls that have been held captive. Amelia Clark is playing Talos' daughter. She's in the Captain Marvel movie. She's this little girl. She's just older now. These younger scrolls have evolved new powers, too. That'll play into the whole Avengers of it all. I'll talk about that in a second. But since the 90s, Nick Fury asked them to lay low, like, please just keep yourselves quiet. Don't let the world know that you exist, and I will find you a new place to live. But he hasn't made good on that, mostly because of the events of Avengers Infinity War, Avengers Endgame, everything that happened with Thanos and the Avengers along those years. He's been a little busy, and since Avengers Endgame, they explained that he's been hiding out on his space station because he's just been so broken, like he's so weak, compared to what he was like in the original Avengers movies. Like, he used to be this person in a really big position of power, pushing people around the board like chess pieces. And what they're doing is that even though they're doing things out of order, they're trying to follow the comic book progression of these big crossover events. So Secret Invasion, everybody remembers from the comics, it was a big Avengers X-Men crossover event. The entire Marvel line, like all the biggest characters you can imagine, who is a scroll? Who do you trust? What ended up happening is in the Marvel Comics version of Civil War, they adapted that loosely for the Captain America Civil War movie. It destabilized the planet so much that's when Princess Faranki of the Scrolls decided to pull off their comic book version of Secret Invasion just because the Earth was so weak and ripe for takeover. The way they're adapting that progression in the MCU is that it was Avengers Endgame. Like, the events of Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame destabilized the planet so much that it just left it ripe for takeover from this evil group of Scrolls. 
Gravik here is meant to be the leader of this evil faction of scrolls from Talos's good group of scrolls that have just gotten tired of waiting for Nick Fury to find them a place to live. So they're like, okay, fine, we'll take the earth for ourselves then. And in scenes like this where you see Amelia Clark's character looking at all these bodies, it seems like these are the important world leaders that the scrolls have started to impersonate. They're still alive, they're just being held in stasis. So when Amelia Clark is telling Nick Fury, this is your fault, Technically, it's his fault, but there's a lot of other things that were happening at the same time. Like, he didn't have control over what was happening with Thanos in Avengers Endgame. And when they asked Nick Fury, why can't you call on your special friends to help you deal with this? Like, the Avengers are super powerful. They could kill all the scrolls pretty easily. There are a couple reasons for that. One of the reasons is because of the Secret Invasion comic book reason, because these scrolls, these younger ones, like the younger generation, have evolved to mimic powers. Like, you can see them using different types of powers that Talos' older scrolls can't do. Part of what Nick Fury is worried about is that they could also impersonate the other Avengers pretty easily. When Nick Fury says he has to deal with this alone, part of the reason is that he's afraid that they could just mimic the other Avengers like they did in the comic book Secret Invasion. The other main reason is that a lot of the Avengers have died and he hasn't put together that new Avengers team yet. Some of them are still alive though, so I'll explain what all the Avengers are doing because some of them are sidelined dealing with other bigger problems in different parts of the galaxy or different parts of the planet and some of them, like the new characters, he doesn't know yet. Iron Man died during Avengers Endgame and as far as we've seen, Nick Fury hasn't let on knowing anything about him backing up his consciousness as an artificial intelligence like Jarvis or Friday, so Iron Man can't help. During the events of Secret Invasion, Thor is still in a different part of the universe with Gore's daughter, helping the other lesser races, doing what a god should be doing, helping his subjects and other lesser races. That was Gore's whole thing, his reason for killing gods, is because he thought that the gods didn't care about lesser mortals. We just saw Hulk during the She-Hulk series. He's actually busy right now dealing with his son Scar that he just learned about from Sakaar, trying to get to know him and teach him about Earth while also protecting him from people like Val and Thunderbolt Ross that would want to capture him and use him as a weapon like they've been trying to do to the Bruce Banner Hulk himself all these years. I believe part of that plot will culminate in Captain America 4 because we know they're going to turn Thunderbolt Ross into Red Hulk, so there's a lot of Hulk-related stuff, Hulk-related characters in Captain America 4, like the leader characters coming back. He's going to be one of the main villains in that. We know that Spider-Man is swinging around New York City, and even though Doctor Strange's spell erased all knowledge of Peter Parker, all the Avengers characters remember Spider-Man, they just don't remember that he's Peter Parker. But the thing about Nick Fury and Spider-Man is that he actually never really met Spider-Man. That was Talos' version of Nick Fury that dealt with Spider-Man, and it sounds like Nick Fury doesn't want to have anything to do with them right now. That's why he had Talos do all that stuff during Spider-Man Far From Home. Like, you deal with the kid, I don't want to talk to him. Old man Captain America Steve Rogers is basically off the board for him. I believe he's really on Nick Fury's Spear space station living in retirement. And that's the payoff to the reference during Falcon and Winter Soldier where like there's this theory running around on Earth that everybody thinks that Captain America is retired in a secret moon base. Some people, they think that he's in a secret base on the moon. So you didn't like fly him to the moon? No. There is a moon base in the comics that belongs to the Watcher. Maybe they'll pay that off eventually too, but I think the theory is a little bit wrong and it's actually him on the Spear space station. We'll probably get some confirmation about what's going on with him during Captain America 4. Sam Wilson's Captain America, New Captain America, is busy dealing with the Serpent Society, which we'll see play out during Captain America 4 New World Order. And right now, even though White Vision is super powerful, he basically screwed off at the end of WandaVision to hide and process the memories that he regained access to. He's meant to be the original Vision from the Infinity Saga who just regained access to all of his memories. Nick Fury at least thinks that Scarlet Witch is dead even though she's technically not dead. Natasha Black Widow died though. Hawkeye permanently retired, so he's kind of off the board, and Captain Marvel during the events of the series is in Kree Skrull space. We won't actually see her till the events of the Marvels movie, and that'll take place after Secret Invasion. Like, what happens during Secret Invasion will lead into the Marvels movie. Even though Shuri is running around as the new Black Panther, Nick Fury doesn't know her, and she's busy rebuilding the nation of Wakanda and her family now that she knows about T'Challa's son, baby T'Challa. And even though they made it seem like Shang-Chi was joining the Avengers in his post credit scene, like, welcome to the team, and there are a couple Avengers there, Nick Fury wasn't around for that, and it sounds like Wong, Hulk, and Captain Marvel were operating on their own together, like doing their own thing when they started investigating the Ten Rings of Power and the special signal inside them. And even though Doctor Strange fought with the Avengers, he doesn't consider himself an Avenger, and even if he did, right now he's busy in another dimension, like in the Dark Dimension with Clea, dealing with the incursions. 
So that's the main reason why the Avengers aren't dealing with these scrolls. Also, like I said, Nick Fury worried that they would just impersonate the Avengers and it make things way worse. Part of the whole idea, though, is that Secret Invasion, like once everybody learns about the scrolls, people like Thunderbolt Ross and Val, they'll use that paranoia to their own advantage and gain positions of power. And it's meant to lead into a Dark Reign era of Marvel Phase 5, like Secret Invasion of the comics led to Dark Reign. Like that happened right after Norman Osborn got a lot of that storyline. But in the MCU, I think they're giving a lot of that to Thunderbolt Ross and Val. Kingpin is also kind of doing his own version of that too, becoming mayor of New York City by the events of Daredevil Born Again, but the Echo episodes will happen before that. Like, they just announced that all the Echo episodes, all six of them, will drop simultaneously in November. Daredevil and Kingpin are really big characters during that, so we'll find out what they're doing right now, and I believe by the end of that, like as we head into the beginning of Daredevil Born Again, which will happen right after, that's where Kingpin becomes mayor of New York City. But the whole idea, the whole vibe with Dark Reign and Marvel Phase 5 is villains taking positions of power and how do the heroes, like how do the Avengers characters deal with that? There'll be a bunch more Secret Invasion trailers in the next couple of weeks. Of course, I'll do more videos as we get more footage, but leave all your theories in the comments below. And if you have any special requests for videos, just write them in the comments as well. Everyone click here for my breakdown of the new Captain America 4 footage and brand new scenes and click here for my new Deadpool 3 teaser video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.